Hey guys, what is going on? This is Cardinal Bird 5. We have another iteration of the pack and play for you guys. And today I'm going up against Noah Syndergaard, as you can see my opponent's lineup there. He has Carlos Correa, Edmonds, Napoli, Cespedes, Grandel, Darnell Sweeney of all people, I don't know why, and Beltre and Pence. And we are pitching, of course, one of our five lefties, Madison Bumgarner. One of our diamond players, actually, and we're going to be playing this game at Sportsman Park. So anyways, to start off the game, uh, I strike out the first batter with a hanging slider, not sure what he was looking for. One of his few lefties, Edmonds, he gets a pretty good rip on it, but he flies out to deep left field. After after the first few innings, I got pretty comfortable with Bumgarner. Uh, my opponent had a pretty slow bat. Napoli hits a low and away changeup here in the gap, however, to make things interesting in the first. So at this point, I started to realize I, I need to bust my opponent inside. Sliders, fastballs for the most part, every now and then throw some curveballs low. And he gets Cespedes up with a man in scoring position, two outs in the first inning. I throw a slider in on the hands, away in on the hands, and I go back with another slider in on the hands. It's a hard pitch to hit. bumgarner has got a really good slider. Get him uh, swinging and missing there to end the inning. And I also want to make him pull the ball to the deepest part of the ballpark in left field. Here we have one of our newly acquired players, Mookie Betts, striking out, and I will guy, I will warn you guys, I am not hitting well with Mookie Betts. Uh, we take a walk there with Carlos or, uh, Carlos Gonzalez, and we hit a pretty sharp liner here with Miguel Cabrera. Unfortunately, the second baseman lets it drop, and it turns a nice, easy double play for him. And we move on to the second inning here. <clears throat> Again, I'm trying to get my opponent, pretty much just pitch him inside. I don't want to pitch him away. I mean, it's so easy to hit a opposite field home runs for the righties in this ballpark you just kind of stick the bat out and the ball can just go over the wall so you have to be really careful and I, I try to mainly pitch inside against all my opponents now it becomes tricky when they get quick bats and that's when I have to risk it and pitch a little bit away until they make that adjustment he does get a man in scoring position here and I get him to ground out to second I left that pitch a little bit over the middle of the plate not really what I tend to do there he has Hunter Pence coming up with a man in scoring position again two to one count I throw a change up down and in he's way out in front here and we're going to go back to Madison Bumgarner, his bread and butter here, and that's a slider. Makes a nice play, throws him out at first, gets out of the inning, so I will take that. I will also tell you guys I am not pitching great with Madison Bumgarner. So it's a nice relief to see him get uh, a good two innings to start the game. As Correa, I hit a high fastball there, but fortunately it's right at him. Just missed it. Correa is very hard to hit with a Hall of Fame without inside edge, by the way. Which is very difficult to hit. His PCI is extremely small as we get his pitcher to swing and miss on a high inside fastball and then I think that was I'm not sure who that was but we get him chasing a low and away slider to fly out it might have been Cano actually I don't even I don't even know who that was to be honest I don't remember who, who his second baseman was uh, next inning our Robinson Cano hits one in the gap for a double so I started to go with it a little bit and I'm I'm facing Syndergaard. I usually it usually takes me a few innings to get to Syndergaard, but one of my main approaches for Syndergaard is to keep being patient. Foul off pitches here at Bumgarner, and that's one key aspect of Madison Bumgarner is he can hit a little bit. We got a runner in scoring position, one and two count. I'm just trying to protect at this point. He throws me a down in the fastball. Bumgarner turns on it, hits it in the left field. We're gonna hold the runner at third though. So we got first and third there. Nice hit by Bumgarner. That is one plus of having Bumgarner as your pitcher is he can hit a little bit and of course Mookie Betts I swear man I strike out every single time with Mookie Betts I don't know if his bat is just too quick for me if it's that he's a little bit shorter that I think that's might be playing into it a little bit is that he is a little bit shorter and then Correa pops up to the third baseman to end the inning and we strand a few runners so Mookie Betts so far up to this point in this game he's been a disappointment I challenge him here at Mike Napoli he hits it out so hey can't do anything about that just have to tip my cap he hit it uh, I made him hit it to the deepest part of the bar park. I mean, he had to hit that 400 feet just to hit it to left center. But that's okay. We'll go ahead and rebound here. We miss our spot completely, but we get the curveball down, and it kind of works out for us in our favor. And we strike out Cespedes, and Grandel comes up. Jam him a little bit, and Miguel Correa right. gets there. No, he doesn't. He drops it. <laughs> but we get him to a 2-2 count. He had a pretty good at-bat here with Grandel. We're going to go back with him with a down and slider. We throw a lot of sliders with him, Gunner. And we get him swinging and missing. It's funny, when I watch Bumgarner pitch, I think I see him throw more curveballs than I do sliders. I don't know if there's any Giants fans out there, but can you guys let me know? Because when I watched him pitch, especially late in the season, he was throwing a lot of curveballs. And in that wildcard game, he was throwing a lot of high fastballs, curveballs. When I use Bumgarner, I like to throw a lot of 
sliders. I mean, I throw probably 60% sliders. As Jake Liam turns on one here, I don't know if this would have went out on any other ballpark, but it hits on top of the stadium. I don't know if that would have went out. It was 357. I probably wouldn't have went out in most stadiums. So we get somewhat of a cheap homer of Jake Liam, and I crush a Jake Liam. I just absolutely crush. And we get another strikeout against Noah. At this point, it's turning into a pitcher's duel. I'm a little rusty. I know at the, when I play this game, I have not been playing too much as of recent. So I know I was a little bit rusty. That's not an excuse. So my goal was to just be patient, try to get something to hit. And uh, I'm going to have to keep pitching well with because my bats are a little bit cold right now. We throw him another. I think that was another down end slider jammed him. And that's one thing I like about Bumgarner's slider is it's a hard slider. It's about 88, 89. It's not like a Jake Arrieta or Syndergaard hard. But when your fastball is only 91, 92, maybe 93 miles an hour, and your slider can go up to 89, that's really deceptive. So and we get a swing and miss there by Syndergaard. So Bumgarner's starting to settle in a little bit after that home run. We got him through four innings. And pay attention to this, guys. I, I like to check the pitch analysis just about every game, especially when I'm struggling. I like to see a lot of pitches. I like to let my opponents to build up their own tendencies, and then I like to look at the pitch analysis and try to come up with a game plan. Um, I don't necessarily remember the, this, uh, this exact game, what I, what my adjustment was, but I just let you guys know that I do that quite often, and usually after that point, I start to hit a little bit better. Not always the case, but we do rip a double here uh, with, I think it's Gary Sanchez, it's a double in the gap. I hit pretty well with that Gary Sanchez card. He does not, does not have sexy attributes by any means, but I hit super well with him. Here, I was trying to fake bump with Bumgarner, and he accidentally hit me. I don't know if that's because I fake bunted or not. But we do get two on for Mookie again, and look at that, another strikeout. I cannot hit with that guy. I don't know what it was. I think I need to be a little bit more aggressive, and then I strike out with Cargo. So I'm straining runners, especially Cargo and uh, Mookie Betts. But I think Mookie Betts is a little bit more disappointing since he's my newly acquired diamond, and I just cannot hit with him. But Bumgarner's still pitching well. Edmonds does sneak a single up the middle there for a hit. Still one to one, so I still have to be careful. And at this point, I'm I'm considering going to my bullpen if I need to. It's a six inning. Bumgarner's a 77 pitches, 2-0 count. Napoli, who homered early, does hit into a double play. We get him chasing a low changeup on a 2-0 count. Not a good AB by my opponent. That's what I'm saying, guys. When you have people on base, you still have to be patient. You can't be super aggressive at all times. Yeah, there's a place and time to be aggressive, but when there's a guy in first, I'm probably my most patient. So you have to keep being patient. There, Miguel Cabrera rips a liner to the left field corner, only can uh, get a single out of it, can't get a double, but look who we got up, Jake Lamb, another bomb, now that would have went out just about any other ballpark, I don't think that would have stayed in any other ballpark, he crushed that one, that was pretty much a hanger down the middle, yeah that went 458, I don't think any other ballpark's uh, holding that in play, even in polo grounds that probably would have went out in the gap, so we go up 3-1 to one at this point, big hit, and then Cano comes up with a man in scoring position and a line out, I get a lot of line outs lately, but it's probably in my head, because anytime I line out I always say that. But we do get a 3-1 lead. In my opinion, he's still pitching pretty well. Syndergaard, he left him in the game. We still got Bumgarner going strong. Does this game look familiar, guys? It kind of reminds me of the uh, the National League wildcard game. That was a really good game. Good pitcher's duel. I think that was a 1-3-0 game, though. We're actually, uh, we got, I've already got a run. He's already got a run on Bumgarner and already got three on Noah Syndergaard. So not quite the pitcher's duel in real life. But for a Diamond Dynasty game, this is a pitcher's duel. But Noah's still going. Or not Noah, but Bumgarner's still going. Darnell Sweeney, again, I don't know why he's starting him, flies out to center field. So we've got seven strong innings out of Bumgarner. Finally, finally get something out of one of our diamond pitchers. We go ahead and pinch hit Beltron for Bumgarner, take him out. He gave us seven strong innings, not much more we could ask for. And uh, I have pretty good faith in my bullpen, even though they're not the greatest bullpen in the world. Beltron rips a double in the left center gap. This is the live series Beltron. I don't have that 500k postseason one. So, I mean, I'm perfectly fond of that live series, Beltron. I'll go ahead and pinch run D. Gordon after this point. Remember, I got him in the pack opening as well. Look who's up again and strikes out again. Mookie, am I over? I, I don't think I've ever hit that bad with any player. So he strikes out again. Doesn't move the runner over. Still got a runner in scoring position. And this is Ozuna. I go ahead and pinch hit Ozuna for uh, Cargo. I thought I got that, but I think I was under it just a little bit. Usually Ozuna, I, I crush that pitch. Ozuna is usually money. If you guys have been following this pack and play series, Miguel Cabrera comes up, two one count. I don't know what I'm doing. I was looking dead heat. I think I don't even know who he's pitching. It's not. I don't think it's a very good lefty. He doesn't throw hard, so I don't know why I was swinging super early. But we strand a couple runners there. Uh, well, one runner, and it's three to one going into the eighth. We start going to our bullpen. We got Deekman in. Mosen down. So we're going to the top of the line. See if we can get some insurance. I decided to leave Jake Lamb in at this point and look another hit. I hit really well with Jake Lamb, guys. Like I said, I think he's the top five third baseman in the game just because of how well I hit with him. 
mean, I almost hit just as well with him as I do at Chipper. I mean, that's pretty much what he is. Against righties, he's a Chipper Jones. Doesn't have great defense. But against lefties, yeah, he's not great, but I usually leave him in anyways because I can't afford to substitute all my players out, all my lefties. We get the bases loaded here. Gary Sanchez hits one deep to center field. Fortunately, the ballpark is going to hold it. This ballpark has a pretty deep center field, but we do get two runners to move over and one of them scores. So we're going to go up 4-1 to one there. So a big insurance run, but we still want to tack on. And we have Robinson Cano coming up. I pinched hit for him. For Musial, he got out. I didn't show you that. But then we had Danny and Valencia come up with a big hit. Fastball down and in. He goes right back up the middle. Go ahead and take second base on that. And that's another little key tip there, guys. If you notice your opponent's are super aggressive in the field and they never hit their cutoffs, take that extra base on them. Just fake like you're going home and take that extra base. And here he makes a crucial mistake. There's two outs, he's going home, and I scored another run, so I'll take that. And that's pretty much the game at that point, 6-1. Uh, we go ahead and go to our bullpen. We, we got O in the bullpen right now. I was hoping for an upgrade for O. I mean, he's had a really good season. We get him swinging and missing on the slider there. He's got one on, one-two count, Cespit us up. Go ahead and challenge him, up and in. Get him the swing and miss to end the game, so... Good overall game. I was a little bit rusty. I'll take the six runs though. Bumgarner did a good job of, of keeping his team in check. He did spread out a few hits, but he only had one run, so I'll take that. I had five hits actually. Jake Lamb, player of the game. Anyways, guys, we got our rating moving up. Uh, just absolutely crushing a Lamb as our pack and play series continues. Our opponent was only a 1773 player. I could tell he, he didn't have a super quick bat, and I think we were up to 1845. Didn't really get anything in the post-game reward, but I, thanks for watching the video, guys. Card number five, signing out. Peace.